got a schedule okay so I just went live anyway uh, try again I'm just testing this out I don't think anyone's gonna see this anyway inner me mechanisms of my mind are an enigma. Okay, hi John. Do you want to watch now or are you busy? I know I asked you for a favor, but I feel like this is the closest thing we'll get for now. Because I haven't left yet, and Dad wants to take me to Tofu House tonight. Wait, can you hear me? Sir, can you hear me? <laughs> uh, I didn't realize stream chat probably takes like what, 10 seconds? So, it's just 10 seconds of me staring blankly at the screen, waiting for someone to chat back. Um, I don't. Okay, I, I am heard. Yay. Okay, um. So, I'm going to do the random challenge with you, John. Feel free to comment. Probably, and it's going to be like 10 seconds delay, so I probably won't listen as well, sadly. So, we're going to do new file. Um, I played this game like three times already, so I know all the tutorials, but I'll explain it as time comes by, in case somebody else comes by. Um, and the choices aren't appearing. Oh, okay. No, I don't want the uh, tutorial to pop up. So for this one, I actually wrote down last night how many choices there are for each little section here to create your MC. So your MC is also going to look different based off what I roll. So there's six different face types, so I'm going to roll a six, uh, a D6. It's here that I have, but I don't have it like over in... I don't have like something that you guys can see, sadly, because I'm I'm not that smart. Anyway, D6. So I got three. So round is one, two, three. So we'll have a pointed face for our MC. And for skin tones, we have um for skin tones we have six skin tones. So I'll be rolling for six again. I got a one, so our character will stay tan. For the eye shapes, we have 12 of them, and I think I have a D12. I do, I have a D12. That's three, so one, two, three. That's what our character's gonna look like. Um, for eye color, we also have 12. I got 11, so give me a sec. I need to switch up, situate my desk space. Okay, so I get 11. Okay, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I look pretty cool. Green eye. Pixar, it didn't. Ha I don't have a setup for something to stare at my thing yet. Okay, maybe one day I will. I'm sorry. You're just gonna have to trust me on this, guys. For hair fronts, there are 65 different hair fronts. So, how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna roll my dice that looks like it goes in increments of tens. I don't know what they're called. I only know what some, the basics are called. But anyway, I'm going to roll the dice that goes in increments of ten. And the, um, and my other one that I call a d10, but I don't think it is. It technically is. So there's that. And if I get anything higher than 65, then I'll just re-roll. So I got 12. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
So I have a tri <laughs> I have triangle bangs. And for the hair back, there are 38. So I'm gonna roll the same things, but just re-roll if we get it wrong. Uh, 52, that's not a number. 74, that's not a available. 50, that's not available. 50 again. 44. I can't do 44 either. So uh, this is a lot harder. 58. Um, zero. Just zero. Uh, I don't. I didn't count as zero. Six, 60 or 90? 90. This is 90. Um, I don't have 90. 25. Yay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. This kid has the worst um, hairstyle ever, but they're eight, so maybe they cut it themselves. And then for hair colors, there's 13 hair colors for each, so I'm gonna have to roll maybe... Um, can't roll the d12. I'm probably gonna roll the d20, and if it's above 13, I'll ignore it. 11, okay. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, I hope the other one's eleven too, but you can't get everything you want. Um, eighteen doesn't exist. Ten. Aw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This poor kid has green and blue hair. So either, well, you know what? Go Cove has green hair. So I guess that's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, Foo Fighter. <laughs> it looks like Foo Fighters! Okay, so for the first name, I usually, I'm just gonna choose a voice name, but right now there's only one current voice name until the, Jamie. until the voice pack is released, but it's not gonna be released for a while. So there are characters always gonna be named Jamie, no matter what. And for last names, um... I always put Nor as in Fire Emblem, uh, Fire Emblem Fates Nor, just because it's funny. And there's three pronoun choices, so I'm just gonna roll a D4, and if I get four, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna ignore it. I got four. I got one, so this is uh, our non-binary eight-year-old, uh, Jamie Nor. Food Fighters, Food Fighters is their last name. Food. Mm. Okay. Food. Fighters. Oh, it fit. Okay, that's good. Oh, Foo Fighters. Okay. No food. Foo Fighters. Okay, so their name is gonna be Foo Fight. Last name's gonna be Foo Fighters for all the way up to part three. So change page. So there's birthmark. There's three different birthmarks you can have. I'm first going to roll my D4 to see how many birthmarks I can have. If I roll a four, my character will have zero birthmarks. I rolled a four, zero birthmarks. Same thing for the scars. Four, zero scars. I think my dice might be um, uh, weighted because I keep getting fours on it. Uh, next, rosy cheeks. Uh, if it's even, I'm gonna roll the d4 again because I don't have a coin. If it's odd, I will have rose cheeks and if it's even, I will not have rosy cheeks. It's odd, so I will. It don't match, but whatever. There's freckles. There's two of them you can have. Um, first, I'll roll. I don't know what I should roll for this one. Um, uh, if I get a one or two, that's how many freckles I have. If I get a three or four, I'll have zero freckles. I got four. <laughs> for glasses, there are nine choices, so I'm gonna roll my D10. And if I get a 10, I just won't have. And if I get a 10 or a 1, I just won't have glasses. Where's my D10? I got 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I just look like this. 
Now this will be hard. Let's see if I have any birthmarks. I'll be... Um... I can't roll a d4 because then how do I get zero? I'll just roll a regular dice. Uh, five or six means I get no, no birthmarks. I got three, so I'll have three birthmarks. Now to figure out which birthmarks I have, I'll roll a d4 three times. I get back birthmark. I get chest birthmark. I rolled a four and a three, and here's my last roll. I got a three again, so I'll actually only have two birthmarks. For the scars, we'll see how many I get. Rolling a d6. Um, I messed up that roll because it fell on its side. Um, four. I'll get four, four scars. Um, four chances to roll scars, basically. I got a four, so I have back scars. I got a four, so that's two rolls so far. I got one, so I also have an arm scar. And last roll, a four. So I only have an arm and a back scar. Well, we'll see if we have freckles on my body. Uh, I'm just gonna roll a d4. Four means I get no freckles. I rolled three, so I have three chances to get freckles. I rolled a one, so I have arm freckles. Um, rolled a one, so that's another arm freckles. And another one, so only arm freckles for Jamie. Uh, clothing types, I feel like you should be checking some of them, but it's optional. So I don't know if my kid just runs around naked if they have the chance to or something. But, um, I think I'll roll a d6 like the others. So I get two chances to get clothes. <laughs> um, I roll one, so I have pants. And I roll a three, so I also have skirts. But no shirts. It's only pants and skirts. You guys gotta look at the eight-year-old's chest, I guess. Because the eight-year-old hates wearing, hate wearing shirts. Jamie fucking hates shirts. They're, um, they're, uh, they suck. Accessory types, again, I'll roll the d6. Where is it? I got one, so I have one chance to get an accessory type. And four. So I wear hats, pants, and skirts, but no shirts. Truly, um, truly the person of their time. This is what eight-year-olds wear. Eight-year-olds wear pants, skirts, and hats. No shirts. And we're done. Thank you, Jamie. Summer and sunset bird was a special time of year. Your usually sleepy town began to bustle. It was a popular tourist destination with people coming from all over to enjoy the beach, the weather, and the relaxation that came with both. The smell of the ocean, crisp and salty, hung in the air, bringing three whole months of schoolless vacation with it. During the summer, your moms didn't like you to wander too far outside your neighborhood, so you knew the area pretty well. That included the people. Families came and went from Sunset Bird, but they mostly stayed and did what your mom called putting down roots. They built businesses, they got to know each other, and they definitely said hello to the nice young kids who waved when passing their stores. Going for a walk around town mostly meant that the familiar, friendly residents waved or asked how your family was, or most often just said hello. Um, I shall roll a d6. It's gonna be one, one, two, three, four, five, six is how I'm gonna do the d6. Four, so one, two, three, four. You didn't, you didn't really get why you always had to say hi. They saw you every day, but you nodded back at them anyway. It was the polite thing to do after all, and your moms had taught you always to be respectful. But today, there was a man sitting on the curb outside your house. He was sitting with his head in his hands, his whole body slumped over, and you wondered if he was even a real person or a statue that has magically sprung up from the ground overnight. Whoever or whatever he was, you had never seen him before. One thing, he, uh, one thing about knowing everyone in Sunset Bird was that people who you didn't recognize really, really stood out. It was rare for tourists to venture into the residential district, as your moms called it. So, for you, not knowing who a total stranger was set off a lot of red flags. Your moms had a talk up with you and your big sister Lizzie about this kind of situation before. Um, again, D6. Five. So, they mentioned that some people aren't good to talk to, but other types of people can help you, even if you don't know them. 
You aren't sure about this man yet. Uh, roll again. One. Still, you felt a bit scared knowing that he was blocking the way to your front door. You slowed down, your mind racing for ideas on how to get past him unseen, but it was too late to escape. There was a split second where your eyes met and you took in a shaky breath, your eyes darting to the sky, pretending to stare at a bird who was hovering nearby. Hey! You're his- eh. His voice startled you and you made a jump, but still, you didn't look at him. The bird landed on top of a nearby gatepost and its black feathers ruffled against the gentle breeze. Trying to keep your eyes on it was tough, tough, especially when the man stood up and started to make his way towards you. Um, five. Still unsure about him, but willing to be friendly, you offered the stranger a smile. The man gives a grin of his own back. Do you live around here? What's your name? You look the man up and down, taking in his tan skin and relaxed appearance. At least his clothes were relaxed, the way he was acting wasn't. He had sharks on his shorts and a stingray tattoo, and you wondered if he was obsessed with the ocean or something. While you made your assessment, he looked at you expectantly, waiting for an answer to his question. 5. I live right there. My name is Jamie. Great. Nice to meet you, Jamie. He gave you a broad smile, relief settling on his face. Uh, inconspicuous $20 bill, by the way. Um... He reached into his pocket and pulled out a clean $20 bill. It crinkled in his hand as he held it up to you. Even more confused than before, you looked back at him. Well... Well, could you do me a favor? Nothing bad. Sorry, I should have... Let me start over. He cleared his throat and stood up straighter. From where you were standing, it just made him look creepier. Hmm. I have a son. His name is Cove. Who's about your age? One, Cove. That seemed like a strange name for an actual living person to you. But definitely the kind of name someone like this guy would give their kid. We moved in across the street, see? He gestured toward the house that had been empty for a year, his watch catching the late afternoon sunlight and reflecting off the walls. The gigantic for sale sign that was finally gone. You must be Jamie Foo Fighters. <laughs> I met your mom's earlier, and they told me you were eight, just like him, so... And he shook the $20 bill to bring it back to your attention, a hopeful smile tilting his lips at the corners. Can you try to be friends with the boy? Just give it a chance, and you can keep this. He's a good kid. You'll like him. Do you mind? But you've got to keep it a secret, too, okay? It wouldn't be friendly to say his dad sent you. One. Okay. You eyed the man. What could be so bad about this cove kid that his dad would need to bribe strangers to be friends with him? What do you say? Wanna make a deal? Um, you know what? You took the bill. You carefully plunked the bill from his outstretched hand, grinning at the thoughts of what you could do with so much cash with that much cash. Um, there's five choices, so this time I'll roll the D ten. Wherever it is. I got a one. All the sweets you could ever want. Your tummy rumbled thinking about it. And that was a start you thought. The sky was the limit with that kind of amount. The man smiled at you, his eyes crinkling at the sides as he did. Great. That's great. I'll bring him by tomorrow. I wanted him to meet and greet with the neighbors today, but... <laughs> well... <sighs> Well, I don't know where he's gotten off to. He laughed when he said that, but with the way his face looked, you thought he actually wanted to cry. If if you see him, can you tell him to come on home? He's got a pink cast and glasses. You can't miss it. Uh, there's four choices, so D4 is perfect for this. Um, wherever it is. My D4 is clear, so I can't see it when I put it down. Two. Sure thing. This definitely wasn't the normal way kids made friends. You knew that, but you were still going to help. The man smiled and reached out to pat you on the head, paused before doing so, then pulled his hand away instead. Your mom's already checking around for me. Such a thoughtful group you are. No, I better go look too. Can't put everyone else to work while I keep sitting here. <sighs> I thought he might come back and... That's not what's important. I have to go. 
Thanks again, Jamie. So much. I guess green hair is normal. Yeah, I mean, considering that Cove has green hair and that his mother has even greener hair, I think anime hairstyles are normal. It's, and, and dyeing them different, like the weird colors, isn't like so weird. Except sometimes they make comments on hair color and sometimes they don't. So I don't know. So I guess green hair. Only green hair is normal so far. Um. He jogged off down the street without another word. You decided to check the hills behind your house. We Step 1. First sight. The chirping of crickets in the tall grass greeted you, quiet and familiar. From the top of the hill, you could see the ocean. As you walked, you listened to the crash of the waves on the shore and the seagulls squawking as they settled down for the night. Um... Three choices, D6. Four. You always loved the ocean. It was so much fun. So, sorry. Sometimes Lizzie would join you, and the two of you splashing each, the two of you splashing each other in the waves. Those were the best days. You took in a deep breath. You wanted to try to relax and couldn't. You weren't sure what, but something told you you weren't alone. So you glanced around. There was a boy sitting at the top of one hill, almost completely hidden within the long grass and white flowers surrounding him. His head was buried in his knees, staring ahead by himself. For whatever reason, probably just that he wasn't paying attention, he hadn't noticed you yet. You watched him a minute longer, feeling a bit like you found a deer in the wild. Though deer did- oh! Excuse me. Though deer didn't have, um, there's five choices, so D10. Seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wavy eyebrows, but this new boy did. You weren't sure what else in the world had eyebrows like that, if there was anything. After a few more seconds, you took a step forward, then another, and then he glanced your way. His aquamarine eyes reflected the light of the moon. You stopped, raising a hand to acknowledge him and show you weren't scary. Um, three choices, D6. Two. Hey, space cadet. I don't know why I called him that. Um, with a start, he jumped to his feet, his hands falling into fists at his side. He didn't say anything, just stared at you in a strange way. He'd been crying. There were traces of tears on his cheeks and his knees, soaking the hem of his shorts, and his eyes were still shining with a few more. He obviously caught him off guard. His pink cast seemed to glow in the twilight, though when he caught you staring at it, he hid his arm behind his back. Something the man earlier had said stuck out to you. Cove? Uh, eyes wide, he studied you. How'd you know that? You touched the money in your pocket, feeling it crinkle beneath your fingertips. Got four, so I met your dad. Oh. Oh. So, is this your hill? He gestured with his uninjured arm to the patch of grass surrounding you, his face falling at the prospect. I can leave if it is. Uh, I got a one, so, yep. Bye then. Wait, you can stay. I'm not kicking you out. But you said, I don't have to make people leave just because it's not theirs. Other people can visit. His face relaxed a little at that, and he towed the grass beneath his shoe timidly. Oh. He sat back down with a thumb, resting his chin on his knees again. Curious about the strange new boy with the odd dad, you sat on the patch of grass next to him. The pure white flowers that covered this hill rocked back and forth gently as the stars twinkled above. The way they dotted the sky made them seem like flowers, too. The night wind was cool as it traveled over the ocean and up the hill, chasing away the heat from the afternoon sun. Uh, there's two choices, so I'll just use a D4. I got four, so why'd your family move? A quiet hiccup escaped Cove as soon as you asked the question. Almost like they never stopped, his tears started up again with a vengeance. My parents, they don't want to live together with me anymore. The tears fell fast and heavy over his flushed cheeks, sticking in his dark lashes. My mom made my dad leave, and he took me with him, and now we have a house here, and I want to go home. The outburst took you off guard. By the time he was done wailing, Cove's chest was heaving with exhaustion. 
He sniffled and removed his glasses, wiping at his eyes with the back of his hand before he put them back on again. I hate this place. I want my real life back. I want my no mom. Uh, there's four choices here. Um, where are you? Two. Your dad seems kind of nice. He slipped his hands underneath his glasses and pressed his fingers against his eyelids. Cove wound himself up again for another long crying fit. It must be hard for Cove, living here without his mom, but at least he still had a parent who cared about him. But from the way off, but from way off in the distance, you heard your parents. Jamie! Cove? Cove? Oh, he said it himself. Ha ha ha. Kids, where did you go? Cove looked at you, tears still clinging to his cheeks. Don't tell them we're here. I want to oh. go home. I don't want to go back to this house. I want to go home. Huh? Five choices. Three. One, two, three. Don't worry so much. Don't worry so much. Sure, maybe it's weird and you're not going to like it. But your dad's there too, right? Yeah. So you're not really all by yourself. Even if it feels like it, you just got to tell him how you feel. You shot him a grin and push yourself to your feet. He can't do anything if you don't make He can't do anything if you don't make him hear you, right? Slowly, Cove stood up with you, still looking a little reluctant. His dad's voice rang out again. Cove, can you hear me? He looked around the, toward the sound of his dad's voice, silent, and turned away while rubbing his not bandaged arm. Sorry. I still don't want to go. Uh, three choices. Five, 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 five. You waited silently with him. Yeah, I get it. You do? Before you could answer, you heard Cove's dad even closer than before. There you are, bud. The trio of parents appeared over the curve of the hill. Instantly, all their eyes. <gasps> Excuse me. Instantly, all their eyes landed on you, and they rushed over. Both of your moms were at your side in a split second, faces filled with worry. Jamie, Jamie, you're here after all. We had been at the park to check for Cove and then heard what happened earlier when you met the new neighbor. I thought you might have gone off further away. Um, four choices. Two. Why is everybody acting like this is such a big thing? We didn't know where you went. We were worried. <sighs> yes. Thank God you're both signed. <sighs> Were you two having fun out here? You looked over at Cove, who was wiggling against his dad's tight hug and pushing at his arms. Uh, four parts. Three. Um. Um. You didn't think that was the right word to describe it, but weren't sure what else to say to your moms. Finally, letting go of his squirming, scowling son, Cove's dad turned to the three of you. That's a relief. Thanks very much for finding him. I really don't know this neighborhood. Good thing Jamie knows this whole area so well. Absolutely. We should be getting home now. It's been a long day for us all. Say goodbye, Cove. Bye. The two of them walked off into the darkness, heading toward the neighborhood. You watched Cove's bright pink cast until it disappeared. Hmm. Mm, tell you what, we'll have a proper play date tomorrow, okay? Your new friend's dad wanted to bring him by to see you and Lizzie. How does that sound? Sounds like words, but, um, roll, I got five, oh, it sounds like words. Both of your moms laughed, the sounds overlapping into a warm, familiar chorus. Mommy put her arm around your shoulder and led you towards the path. Mommy's this one, by the way, just so you guys don't get confused, and then this is mom. Satisfied, and more than a little ready to go to bed after your long, exciting day, you followed them home. Okay, so this part of the game is where you get to choose like your comfort levels right here and your interest levels right here. And there's three comfort levels. It's nervous, relaxed, and direct. And currently what's available is three different um, interest levels. Indifference means you're not friends. Fawn means you're friends. And crush means, uh, if you know English, a crush is a crush. But um, you like him, basically. So I'm going to roll a d6 to figure out how comfortable I am with Co Jamie is with Cove. I am whatever. I got a 6. So that means I'm direct with him. And then for interest levels, I got a 4. 
which means I am indifferent. We are not friends yet. Um, we are not friends yet. So you're both eight-year-old. I played this game before with uh, a indifference interest level at this part of the game, because there's three parts of the game where you play at three different ages. But this part of the game, being indifferent to Cove isn't so bad, because it's just like, oh, this is my first summer knowing you. It's like, we'll just kind of hang out. It gets more heartbreaking if you stay indifferent for the rest of the game. It really do. Anyway, it's time to start. Uh, let me save real quick. Early the next morning, you were poking at your food, eating it slowly. Your sister Lizzie had run out earlier to go play, but you stayed put. Today, just like your moms had promised, Cove was coming over to hang out. Excited to see your new friend again, Jamie? We're not friends, really. Okay. With that said, are you done with your breakfast? <laughs> Four? Yeah. <laughs> with all the exasperation an eight-year-old can, mu can muster, you looked at your empty cereal bowl, then at mom. Okay. Okay, attitude kid. We see. Good job. He should be here soon. Clean up began, and then on cue, there was a knock. It was hesitant, like the person wasn't sure they were in the right place. Still loud, though. We need to get a more obvious doorbell. I know, I know. Jamie, could you get it? Because mom said so, you wandered over to the door. Hey, Foo Fighters family. Thanks for having us. Mr. Holden, as your moms have called him, and his son were there. Cove looked different in the bright lighting of your living room, and when he wasn't crying. With his dad standing in front of him, and mom and mommy behind you, you and Cove looked at each other. You said to Cove apathetically, this was his parents, this was the par this was the parents' plan, not yours. Not seeming any more excited than you were, he just stared back. Do you want to go to in your room, Jamie? Sure. I've got some cool stuff. Come look. Okay. Oh. Take care. Let us know if you need anything, you two. Uh, I think I forgot to mention, but when you go and choose, I choose the interest level, Cove will have the same interest back at you so that it's never like a one-sided crush or like he really likes you but you have zero interest in him or anything like that. But you do have a choice to like later on in the game, let's say you choose crush and then he confesses to you. You can just deny him any right to dating you even though you have a crush on him. Okay, anyway, mom, have fun kids. See you. See you later, son, play nice. Um, huh, my room, so nice, so tiny. I like, I like the kid's desk right here. Like, I don't know if they have a chair over to the side, but look, look how nice this desk is. And I like when desks are like on the wall like this, cause it also looks like you can fold it up. I doubt you can actually, but it looks really nice how this room is laid out. I also like this little bed for kids. It's like a wall. I don't know, it just looks really cute. Anyway, you led him to your room, putting out, puffing out your chest a little bit at the sight of your treasures. There are lots of stuffed animals, a cool bed, a window to look out. It was a great room. You hadn't had anyone to show it, show it to in a while, but you were really proud of it. He leaned in a little closer to one of your drawings on the wall. I like this. Thank you, Cove. Um, let's see what my what Jamie will actually say though. Four. I don't. I drew it, but it's not very good. I think it is. You smiled slightly at him, even if it wasn't work you were pleased with. It was polite of him to say. That's cute. Anyway, he turned to look around the room a little more, studying the books on your desk and the pictures on the wall. Two. You felt the atmosphere was kind of awkward. He wanted to say something, but didn't know what, so you let him keep looking. Then his eyes landed on the tiny box of beach things you collected, tucked away by your door. He took a step towards it, before hesitating and pointing at it instead. What's that? A hoard of stuff I found on the beach. 
Oh, do you have any driftwood in there? Dragging the box into the middle of the room, you and Ko flopped down next to it. I do. Look. You gestured to a piece at the bottom still covered with specks of sand. Neat. Neat. This is a good collection. You got the sense from the tone of his voice that he wasn't just saying it to be nice or to be like Shiloh. He actually meant it. I forgot about Shiloh. Shiloh? He's friends with my older sister, and he's supposed to hang out here this more afternoon. Mm. Do I have to see him? You don't have to do anything, but he's going to be here. Anyway, I found this gigantic shell here stuck to an even bigger rock. You pulled out seashell after seashell, explaining where you got in each one, and holding them up against the light. There are big ones, small ones, pink, purple, and orange. Most of them... Sorry. Most of them you washed off in the bathroom sink when you brought them home, cleaning off the sand. Uh, da -da -da, D6. Three! Your voice faltered a little bit, but you kept going as best as you could. You were really proud of your shell collection, and it made you happy that Cope was interested in it too. Apparently fascinated either by the stories or by the shells themselves, Cope listened with what looked like the full force of his attention. It was a new experience to be the center of such dedicated focus, even if, if it was only directed at the shells. Kids, come down to the living room! You could tell the idea was making him unhappy, but Mommy wasn't giving you much of a chance to hang around. Cope hadn't been been like this meeting you. You guess it was because he thinks you found each other by accident, not that a parent made it happen. Mr. Holden might, must be right that telling Cove his dad was part of what- Mr. Holden must have been right that telling Cove his dad was part of that would be a bad idea. Before you knew it, you are both been escorted downstairs and deposited in the living room, ready for Shiloh's visit. The two of you sat side by side on the floor of your home's entryway. Um. I brought the box of shells. I want to keep looking at them. Three. You should have asked. Sorry. Fine. What's done is done. He opened the lid, peering inside again. Cove reached in and pulled out a big orange shell. Oh. Like he hadn't spoken out loud yet. He turned to you and held it up, his eyes shining. Damn. Damn what? Wait, damn, you're mean, lol. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, my character's pretty mean so far, just based off what I roll. But, um, that might also be with how, um, comfortable Jamie is with talking with Cove, too. Because while, um, because some of the answers are a bit more direct and... Cove also talks back to you, you more directly if you're like that, and so do your other characters. Anyway, Cove says, I think this one is the best of them. Uh, three, you can take it. Cove looked at you in surprise, his eyes going wide. Really? Sure, you like it a lot, right? Uh-huh, but I don't want to take it from you. It's okay. You got the impression he was hesitant to accept something because he didn't know you very well. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. Two, you let it go. Okay. You didn't want to pressure Cove too much. It was supposed to make him happy, not nervous. Plus, Cove was your neighbor now. Maybe you could give it to him another time. The two of you were still sitting on the floor looking through your collection of beach findings when the doorbell finally rang. Cove jumped, startled by the sound. Since the person hadn't knocked, you figured it was probably Shiloh. He knew where to look for that. Lizzie's friend? You nodded, but that didn't seem to make Cove feel better. It was already obvious that Cove didn't hide his feelings well. You could tell what he was thinking right away. This isn't a good idea. It's just Shiloh, and where would you even go? He's at our only door, and if you go upstairs, he'll find you. Cove glanced around the room, his eyes wide, and finally paused with his gaze locked onto the back of the house. I can go out the window. He was already walking towards it. Scrambling to think of something to say, you step forward, then pause. Uh, there's six choices, so I can just roll a d6. I got six. Good idea! Let's go! <laughs> Hurry! They'll see where we're going. He glanced back at you, then nodded. The two of you made your way to the window together. 
It wasn't much of a distance to clamber out, but by the time you landed gently in the bushes, you looked up to see that Cope was already taking off away from the house. Um, D4. D4, D4, give me. I got one. He was fast, but you knew you could outrun him if you had to. Cove! You ran as fast as your legs would take you, grass whipping around your ankles as you did so. Cautiously, Cove slowed to a halt and looked back at you. Where are you going? I don't know. Somewhere else. I just don't want to see- Jamie! You looked back and saw Shiloh huffing down the hill after you, the backpack he clutched bouncing all around along the way. What are you doing? Can I come? He must have seen you leaving out the window and followed behind. Hi! Oh, hi! Are you Cove? Okay. Fuck Shiloh. Um, I doubt anyone else is watching at the current moment. Can I just mention the uh, though? Um, Shiloh is a character from their from GB Patch's past game. Um, the past game being XOXO Droplets and the spinoff XOXO Blood Droplets, which is their horror version of the game. Um, but the point of XOXO Droplets was that all the main love interests. Shiloh was one of them was that they were assholes so Shiloh is one of the many assholes you can date I think six uh, Shiloh's assholery comes from the fact that he's fake nice like he's nice to be he's nice because he thinks he'll help him in the future kind of thing and that's all he knows what to do so he seems like a fake um, fake guy which is why no one likes him in the game Uh, hold on. I saw something. What the fuck? Sorry, I saw something, but we're good. That and he's ugly. John, that is so mean. Um,. I think Shiloh's cute. He's actually one of the easier characters to date when you first play XOXO Droplets. Not because it's like hard gameplay wise, considering what the XOXO Droplets is like, but he's just not as mean as the others. Because the others are straight up like, they will call you names and they will call you, I feel like they call you slurs at some point, but I might be wrong. But yeah, the other ones are like loud mean to you. At least with Shiloh, you can pretend that he kind of likes you. Maybe. But yeah, Shiloh is probably one of the more... Shiloh is one of the more likable characters. And I think Jeremy is also one of the more likable characters. Because the reason that Shiloh and Jamie, who you won't see until part two, um, get in this game is because they're the most popular characters from the past game. <coughs> oh god, I can't. My throat's so dry. Anyway. Shiloh. Oh, hi. Are you Cove? Yeah. yeah. I'm Shiloh. Okay. Yep. Are we going back? Or are we going to play outside? Shiloh's eyes moved between you and Cove. The smile remained strong on his face. He got a tiny frown from Cove in response. You were just grateful he hadn't asked why you had been running away. Inside, you left the box on the floor. My stuff! We need to get it before someone steps on it! Okay! Oh, you cute baby. <laughs> With Shiloh trailing behind, you and Cove headed back toward the house. The plan for the afternoon, at least as far as you were concerned, was to sit and look at the beach thing some more. You weren't really in the mood to do much of anything else. This is the scallop shell I found last week. I kept it because it looks neat. It's a pretty color, kind of like my cast. The beautiful glittering pink did look a little bit like the wrap around his arm. Pink is a nice color. Okay. Oh? Is it your favorite? Not really. What is? Maybe green or blue. It might be yellow. Oh, those are all cool. I guess. I guess. Um, dice, 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 dime. What, where did it land? Landed it on a three. Not sure how to deal with the suddenly more awkward silence, you look back at your shells. Mm. Uh. 
Also, John, why did you call him ugly? He's like six or seven in this picture, okay? <laughs> That's so mean to this child. Anyway. <laughs> like usual, it didn't take long for Shiloh to get fidgety. Lizzie was his favorite. Without her around, Shiloh didn't seem to know what to do with himself. And Cope wasn't like your sister. He wasn't that much like you either. Is Lizzie coming back? I don't know. Oh, oh. Where'd she go? I think she's at the beach. Probably. Is she playing at her park? Ko's eyes lit up at the mention of the park, and he looked towards you. Oh, there's a park? Yep, but it's old. Can you show me? I want to go. He started getting up before Yeti even answered, and Shiloh jumped up beside him in excitement. Really? You do, you do too, right, Jamie? The park is fun. <laughs> Two, the park is pretty great. Yeah. Yeah, it's right at the beach, so there's lots of fun stuff to do, and lots of sand. It has a jungle gym and a bunch of swings. That sounds like it could be cool. So, are we gonna find Lizzie? I don't know. I never really wanted to see her. I just want to check the park out. Adrift without any direction, Shiloh finally turned to you. Okay. He perked up. Both boys wanted to go. It was only fair. After getting permission from your moms, the three of you were ready to head out. It was a short walk to the park. Lizzie had convinced your moms that it was so short, she should always be allowed to walk there by herself. When you found her, she was hanging on the jungle gym, swinging back and forth. Hey, Lizzie. Her face lit up when she saw you, her big brown eyes going wide. Jamie! Shiloh! Hi! She dropped to the ground and landed with a soft thud in the sand. In a split second, Shiloh had abandoned you two and scrambled over to stand by her. You were used to being left out when it was just the three of you, but now Cove was here. You weren't sure if this was an improvement. Who's that? It's Cove. He's new. Hi! I remember. Hi, Cove. Welcome to my park. Nobody ever comes to play here, so this is where we get together. She gestured wildly with her arms as you present the area to the newcomer. While Lizzie continued talking, you took the chance to kick off your shoes and wiggle your toes through the warm sand. Nice, huh? In this neighborhood, I'm the one who comes up with the ideas. You are? Uh-huh. Yeah, I am. Who else could handle the job? Lizzie's the oldest. By a lot. My mom said you're Jamie's age. Yeah. yeah. Thought so. I'm still the only one in this group with double digits. What about other kids? Other kids? There aren't any. We're the only kids here, and Shiloh is just visiting from another place. Not even tourists really bring their kids here. This is the land of agents. Be careful what the oldies don't try to don't try to steal your work. youth. Oh. Oh. For a second, it looked like he might cry again. But something in his eyes shifted, and he looked back at Lizzie. What kind of old people? Like moms and dads? Or grandparents? Grandparents who don't have kids. They hate kids. <gasps> Why? We haven't done anything. Um. What was it? Four. Only some of them don't like kids. You interjected quickly, hoping Lizzie wouldn't take things too far. Kosha sniffled, his forehead creasing with worry. Lizzie was staring Cove down, but Cove wasn't even looking at her anymore. He didn't seem to care that she was there. He went into his own head. Shiloh was the next one to speak, completely unaware of the situation. Um, um, I met Lizzie and Jamie in school. You'll see tons of kids there when summer is over. I don't want to go to a new school. I don't want summer to end. Shiloh looked down to the dirt. He hadn't had much luck striking up conversation with Cove. I like summer vacation a lot too. All the building tension in the air suddenly vanished when Lizzie laughed. At Shiloh's discomfort, at how weird she thought Cove was, or something else entirely, you didn't really know. But she laughed, face scrunching up. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Sunset Bird Cove. Take a seat, put up your feet, and get used to it. <sighs> Wah. Wah is right. For the rest of the summer, Cove was always there. You saw him more often than Shiloh, and on some days when she was in a bad mood or busy, you even saw him more than Lizzie. Uh, he became a staple of your everyday life, the way sun and lunch and the beach were. 
The first summer, you hadn't really been interested in him one way or another. He was just kind of a fact of life. Someone you met with because he was there. Of course, that was only the start of things. Um, so there's 10 different memories. I have the DLC downloaded because I really like uh, everything about this game already. Mm. Uh, let me go text my friends real quick. Good morning. It's 3 p.m. where I'm at, but good morning. So there's 10 events. So I want to always perform at least one event. So I will uh, roll how many events we're going to do in total. So we'll always have one. Run away? Run away from what? Oh, the DLC. Run away. Yeah, um, it's a really fun one. Hopefully we get it when we roll. Oh, no, I have to redo that. I fucked up. So we'll be doing, is that a seven? Seven events all together. Let me write this down before I forget because I feel like I'm gonna end this after like maybe two or three events, uh, memories that we do. So let me see. Twitch, P1, seven. So we're gonna do seven events. Each event will be number one through 10. And we're gonna now we're gonna see which event we do first. We'll be doing number one together, shopping. Good one. Ko's dad. Oh, let me save real quick. It's lots of. The, if there's one thing about this game is that there's kind of like a lot of reading, which I like, but some people don't like when they read visual novels, which are called novels, but I'm not gonna point that out to them. <laughs> Um, come back before it comes dark. Come back before it gets dark. All right, sport. The familiar voice drifted across the street and drew your attention away from the snail you've been watching inch slowly across the pavement. Cove waited in front of his dad, pushing his green hair back off his face from when the breeze was blowing it over his glasses. He took. He looked to be paying only a mild amount of attention as he was being handed a few slips of green paper. It reminded you of when you first met Mr. Holden, although he's probably not paying Cove to be friends with himself. Cove's dad seemed to feel your gaze somehow, or maybe you made a noise, because a second later, his eyes were on you. He waved you over with a smile. He looked happy to see you, but you still felt a little weird for getting caught. You gotta learn how to be more sneaky. You brushed your hands together to free them of sand, then jogged over to join the two. How's it going? Good to see you again. What excitement are you up to today, Jamie? Stuff. I found a really cool snail across the road. He was slimy, with funny eyes, and a nice shell. Mr. Holden grinned at your enthusiasm. After you finished answering the question, Mr. Holden's attention returned to Cove, who was preoccupied with folding the bills he had into a tiny rectangle. Sounds fun. You know, Cove was about to hit the stores by the beach. Why don't you go with him? He shrugged. Cove was in the process of making a similar motion. You didn't have anything else to do, and you hadn't been to the stores in a few days maybe there was something new to look at maybe is that okay i guess i was going by myself but i guess it is you don't have to great i'm sure you guys will have loads of fun mr holden reached into his pocket and pulled out a leather wallet filled with money he found it odd since your mom's only ever seemed to have cards in theirs here he leaned in to pass a crisp tent to cove giving him a wink and a whisper Get something for your friend, too. Sure. Good kid. That's my boy. Ko's dad ruffled his son's hair as he was straightening back up. The bill in his hand still held out towards the green-haired boy. Take care. Cove accepted the bill after a second and slipped it into his pocket. But with one last... Not to his dad. Ah, fuck. He turned and started walking. He followed after him and triggered the possibilities his outing might bring. Cove strayed towards the gentle tide, creeping up the sand, and you all fell, and you fell into place beside him. It was a nice day, the sun was shining, and there wasn't many clouds in the sky, though the wind coming off the ocean kept it from being too hot. He took in a deep breath, enjoying the scent of salt and ocean air. When you looked at Cove, he was dragging his feet through the sand a little, and you slowed down to wait for him. His eyes searched the ground intently. Where's my dice? Four. You didn't feel the need to ask why. 
Searching the sand in front of you as you walked, you kept an eye out for any cool shells you might find that you could add to your collection. The comforting sound of the waves filled the silence with pleasant white noise, and you played a little game with yourself as you walked along, getting as close to the water as possible without getting wet. It resulted in you having to run up the sand quickly when a wave rushed in more than a few times, and although Cove threw a few glances your way, he didn't say a word. Do, 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 do. Five, 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 five. What did you want to go to the shops for? I need a new sand pail. Yeah? What happened to your old one? Cove narrowed his eyes, seeming to think deeply for a second. Whoa! It disappeared. What? Really? Cove ducked his head down, lacing his fingers behind his back. It didn't seem like he was going to continue, so you nudged his arm. How did that happen? Well... Cove opened his mouth and shut it again, considering. Hmm. I took it to the beach one day. Uh-huh. When I got home, it wasn't anywhere. You left it there? Nope, it wasn't at the beach when I went back. Then you lost it! It disappeared. So... What about you? What do you do out here? One, two, three, five. Ba-da-da-da! Nothing. I don't like the beach. Fuck, Jamie, you live here! What? <laughs> Cove looked taken aback by your declaration, wrinkling his nose as he stared at you in confusion. The beach must matter a lot to him, but that makes sense. His name was Cove, after all. Once you reached the shopping area, the noise level grew exponentially. No longer just waves and footsteps, but the chatter of people enjoying their lovely summer day. The call of birds trying to find bits of food left behind, and lots of salespeople trying to get attention. You sniffed the air as you walked beside Cove. You could still smell the ocean, but there were other scents now too. Pizza, pretzels, hot donuts. Uh, it's not very nice. There's too much of everything, but you weren't going to leave yet. And Cove would definitely want to look around for at least a while. That's what he had to come to do today. Cove was glancing from one side to the street to the other with a look in his awful marine eyes that you couldn't quite work out. Um, what's that? Cove pointed to a large crowd of people gathered near a few tables with large colorful umbrellas blooming from their middles. You couldn't see past the adults who were blocking the way, but you knew that there must be something worth seeing. Without another word, the two of you hurried over to see what all the commotion was about. Feast your eyes on the amazing Alexander! In the center of the crowd was a man with a tall hat and a funny green coat that had three t long tails. There was a little table next to him with a cloth hanging over it that read the amazing Alexander in the glittery, gold glittery golden script. Why tell people his name if it's already on a sign? Cove hummed with understanding, then turned to walk away just as the amazing Alexander began shuffling a deck of cards. I want to see the show! Cove glanced back at the man. Well, reading makes your throat dry. He then briefly lifted the, his arms up off the sides before returning them to place. Okay. Okay. May not be impressed, but at least he didn't ditch you. You grinned, waiting for him to follow you as you raced back to stand in the crowd. With that, it began. The magic man. I like your words, funny magic man! The magic man pulled one card out of the deck, showing it to the curious onlookers. It was a four of diamonds. Watch closely. You did, squeezing through a few of the onlookers to the better view. <sighs> <sighs> Suddenly, the man snapped his fingers, and the card just disappeared. Whoa! Cove. The amazing Alexander, who had earned his title, turned his head and looked directly at you. He reached out with a kind smile. What's this behind your ear? What is it indeed? Six, you backed away. It wasn't enough to deter him, and the crowd of people gathered behind you made it impossible to move any further. He smelled like popcorn and candy when he stepped closer, and you swallowed anxiously. You felt his hug, and then he pulled the four of them out from behind your ear. What? You knew that I couldn't really have come from your ear, but you still didn't get how he'd done it. There was a light applause from the crowd, and the man gave a deep bow. 
This is for you. The magician plucked a pair of balloons from a clump of them tied down to his table. Both were in the shape of a dolphin instead of having a normal circle. I want for your friend too. Thank you for being my assistant. Wow. Now you were really grateful he chose you. After that, he went to someone else in the crowd. Pick a card. Any card. Mm. My uncle does that every time he visits. Not the balloons. The stuff with the cards. Ko spoke plainly while reaching over to take the dolphin that had been designated for him. Three. At least he had a fun time. He saw a magic trick and got a great balloon. That was more than enough to make it a worthwhile event. He thought if he could find a card to practice with, maybe you could make it disappear too. The crowd started to clear some and you noticed to the side that there was a whole rack of brightly colored kaleidoscopes on display. One, you picked up a kaleidoscope. Oh, Kof, check this out. You shifted your balloon string to your other hand so you could bring the mysterious tunnel to your eye. A whole palette of colors appeared right in front of you, spinning into all kinds of different shapes as you twisted the end of the tube. Hmm. Cove picked one up and looked through, twisting the tube at the end. After a second, he sat back on the rack, moving on to the other side of the stall. He went under the awning, careful of his own floating dolphin, and you joined him. I don't really like it here. Jeez, my kid has like... Fuck Jamie, damn. You didn't have to come. And that was it. You stood in silence for a few moments, waiting for Cope to do something. When he finally moved towards some stalls and right, he followed behind him. Oh, please! While Cove looked at sand pills, you were drawn to a table with colorful keychains laid on it. They were sewn in the shape of sea creatures, and there was a plaque that read, Handmade, standing proudly in front. There are lots of different types. You saw a dolphin, a shark, a crow, a turtle. Oh. You picked up the turtle. Your hand stopped on the sleeping turtle, just barely poking his head out of the shell. I had flecks of metallic green on his back that caught the sunlight when you picked it up. You remembered the turtles you had once seen at the aquarium. You had been mesmerized by the way they gently glided through the water. You were instantly enamored. Check in the price though, your heart fell. Six dollars? You didn't know much about money, but you thought that was a lot to spend on one thing. You rarely had more than a five dollar bill to your name. Though, that changed the day you met Cove and his dad. You still had a $20 bill Mr. Holden gave to you hidden away in your room. It was a grand sum of money, but you couldn't spend something that was at home instead of in your pocket. Maybe you'd have to ask your mom to bring you here again one day, now that you knew what you wanted. Is that what you want? Huh? Oh, it's $6. I didn't bring any money. Alright, it's fine. Uh, there's five choices. Um, so last time I played this game, offline, I ended up refusing, and I was so sad, so sad. Like, I couldn't. Um, that's a six. Really? Really? Cove took the keychain from your hands, and that was that. He was holding a small yellow bucket for himself, too. My dad told me to. You beamed, excited at the idea of displaying the keychain somewhere in your room. It was nice of Cove's dad to let you buy something for you, too. He had to remind her to thank him next time you saw him. After Cove paid, the two of you stepped out of the store side by side, your balloon dolphins knocking together and spiraling around in the air. You watched Cove hold up his new pail to his face, examining thoroughly. Hey, Cove. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> two. Thanks for the keychain. Thank my dad. Cove looked further down the street where different food carts were lined up. He rested his non-cast arm over his stomach, and just as he did, George let out a light growl. You hadn't eaten six breakfast, and after all this wandering around, you're definitely ready for some lunch. Let's get some food. Yeah. You two wander around a short while, looking at all the delicacies that you were available. Everything looked delicious, delicious, and as the different smells, both sweet and salty, wafted over to you, your stomach growled even louder. After passing up hot dogs, snow cones, ice cream, and pizza, you both agreed on pretzels. Cove got something sweet and cinnamon in it. And you... 
roll a five, roll a ten. Got nine. Got one was chocolate. You licked your lips hungrily as the vendor handed you a pretzel over. Ready? Take a big bite. It had tiny marshmallows on it, and it was dripping with chocolate. Just how you liked it. I personally don't like chocolate or marshmallows, so that kind of sounds gross to me, but we'll just leave it alone. Here, the, Jamie's eight years old. <laughs> Your mom didn't like you to eat too much sugar, but this was a special occasion. You found an empty table close enough to the beach that the grit of the sand made terrible noises when you dragged the chairs out to sit. These balloons are going to make it hard to eat. Co Cove placed his bucket on the table as he stared at his still balled up hand that was wrapped around the string. You opened your mouth to agree before an idea hit you. I know. After carefully placing your pretzel somewhere it wouldn't get sandy, you tucked the balloon dolphin out of Cove ha Cove's hand and tied it in a delicate bowl bow around his wrist. Oh! Oh. Cove bounced his arm up and down in place, testing the stability of your knot. After watching his balloon jostle around but remain attached, he smiled, satisfied. There, now do mine. He repeated the ritual. Cove struggled somewhat with the cast restricting his fingers on one hand and a string ready, already tangled around the other. Okay. Mm, got it. The TV spent a moment admiring your handiwork. Both hands now free to allow easy munching on your pretzels. You bit into the doughy treat, savoring the taste on your tongue with a smile as you looked over, out over the ocean. After a time, you finished your pretzel. You were done before Cove. It was boring not having anything to do. You pulled on the string of your balloon to bring it down to your level, then held the dolphin in your hands, manipulating it to make it look like it was jumping through the air. If you turned it face towards the beach, it almost looked like it was swimming in the waves like a real dolphin. A laugh came from your side. When you glanced back at Cove, he had left the remaining part of his pretzel on the wrapper, and he was gripping his dolphin too. <laughs> My na mine's name is Sam. They're just a regular dolphin. You sighed, thinking how great it would be to have a pet dolphin of your own. What's yours? Cove considered his this question. Placing the balloon against his table uh, oh. <laughs> and resting his free arm across in contemplation. It's with a loud pop, the d dolphin exploded into ribbons. <gasps> ah, ah. Oh no. For a second, all Cove did was gape in shock, like you. Then his cheeks puffed up, squinting his eyes, and you saw tears start to glisten. No, no, I hope I don't do the vain thing. One, you made a joke. I fucking hate this dice. <laughs> its name is Pop? That's a weird name for a dolphin. Cove continued to stare at the ribbons that remained, his brows furrowed. That's not funny, Jamie. It's kind of funny. Co sniffled, looking up and narrowing his eyes even more at you. No! <laughs> Sorry! No, it isn't! It was still funny to you. His reaction was too good. Co spent the rest of the outing sniffling and didn't say much else. The passing of Co's balloon was the last major event of your adventure. In the end, the two of you headed back late that afternoon. You separated on the beach, and while Cove went straight home with his brand new sand pail in hand, you decided to sit for a while. You watched the waves and the sunset, fiddling with your new keychain. And then our Saturday day was drawing to a close. It had been nice, for the most part. Hopefully there wouldn't be any tears next time. Alright, we have six more events to go through. Let's roll for what we're gonna do next. Ten. We're gonna do a sleepover. We're not friends, though, so it's hilarious. Sleepover time. Okay. Alright kids, we're done with dinner. Come to the table. Your stomach grumbled right on time, as if it had heard your mom's words. You halted your game and looked over. Mama was almost done setting the table. She was walking around the mahogany wood and in the process of putting down cutlery. Mom was still in the kitchen, humming under her breath as she turned off the stove and put empty pots in the sink to wash. From beside you, Jamie stirred. Uncrossing- Oh, Lizzie stirred. What the fuck? Lizzie stirred, uncrossing her legs and standing up. She stretched her arms above her head. Finally, I'm ready to eat. Then she cast a sly glance in your direction. You recognize that look. <laughs> Last one to the table is a rotten egg. I haven't... 
but it was too late. Lizzie had already bolted towards the kitchen. One, you try to catch up to her. She was all but daring you to give chase. You planted a head against the ground to jump to your feet. For a moment, you stumbled, but you righted yourself easily enough, then rushed after her. Though there wasn't really time to close the gap. It was a short distance to the kitchen table. Lizzie managed to get there easily enough, slapping a hand all over the wood. <coughs> Mom moved just before Lizzie could bump into her. With an exasperated sigh, she resumed her work. <laughs> I win again! Okay. Four. You didn't bother trying to talk her about that. I won! I won! That means you're the rotten egg. Lizzie grinned, her hands on her hips, then looked over your shoulder. Cove, you think so too, right? You blinked. You almost forgotten about him. The fact that Cove preferred to keep to him himself didn't help matters any either. You spotted Cove, still on the floor. His legs were crossed beneath him, the arm with the cast resting in his lap. He looked at the two of you with a slight frown. It felt sort of strange to see him still here so late. Tonight, Cove had come to your house for a sleepover. Your moms and his dad had planned it a few days ago. Do, 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 do. You hadn't expected it when your mom sold you, but you didn't mind Cove sleeping over. It was just for one night. Even if he's not really your friend, he isn't the worst person in the world. Cove pursed his lips at Lizzie's question, but he didn't respond. Maybe he was planning on ignoring her. Not that Lizzie would make it easy. Come on! Well, did I win or what? Cove still didn't respond. He turned away, refusing to weigh in. Lizzie glowered, but glowered, glowered, I don't know what this word is, but it had no effect. Fine, you don't have to say so. You can both be rotten eggs. That's enough. Nobody here is a loser or a rotten egg. You're each farm fresh. Which is a sentence I never thought I'd say. Alright. Now listen to mom and come sit at the table for dinner, all three of you. You and Lizzie obeyed, sitting across from each other at the edge of the table. Lizzie blew a raspberry at you when Mom turned her back. Two can play that game. You stuck your tongue out right back. When Mommy pointedly cleared her throat, though, the two of you stopped. Your parents brought the last of the food. Which then they took seats further down the table instead of sitting right next to you and Lizzie. Only Cove was left out. He had stood up from his spot on the floor, but he hadn't made a move towards the kitchen. Cove, you can sit too. Slowly, he eyed the four seats that were left. Thanks to the new seating arrangement your parents chose, one free chair was beside you, another next to Lizzie, and the last two were on the other side of where your moms were sitting. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. You can sit anywhere you want to. He hung his head and scuttled past you, Lizzie, and your moms. Cove went to the chair on the opposite edge of the table and sat down. It seemed being far away is what he wanted. Your moms frowned. You shrugged it off and turned back to your plate. Now that everyone was situation, situated, Mommy began to pass out plates. Okay. Dig in, kids. I cooked a little bit of everything for dinner tonight. Be sure not to avoid all the veggies. Ugh. Yes, Mom. Each person at the table served themselves, except for one. Cove hesitated again. He fidgeted with his hand clamped on top of his knees. He didn't seem very comfortable doing stuff in someone else's house. One dish seemed to have his eye, at least. That's pineapple chicken. Wanna try some? Mmm. Not really. Sorry. But then your moms had noted that Cove still had nothing on his plate as well. Do you not like any of the food, honey? Wow. Maybe he hasn't tried Hawaiian food before. He hasn't? Wow. Please don't talk with your mouth full, Lizzie. Lizzie swallowed in the bite she was eating. Then she spoke again. He should try it now. She turned to Cove dramatically. Unless you want to shrink. That's what happens when you if you miss a meal. Elizabeth, that's not true. You know that. Cove squirmed under all the attention. He fidgeted with a fork between his fingers. I've had some things. Just not any of this. Oh, shoot. I knew I should have asked your dad what your favorite foods were. It's alright, Lonnie. Maybe we'll find a new favorite today. We weren't so sure about that. Cove didn't look like he was going to be trying to food anytime soon. Four, you should try something new. Aren't you tired of eating the same old things? 
You were only trying to help, but it seemed to make Cove even more resistant to tasting any of the dishes. He sat back in his chair, folding his arms across his chest stubbornly. I like the same old things. Mom shook her head over the debacle this was becoming. It's okay. New isn't always exciting for everyone, but it could be this time, Cove. You shrugged. You didn't understand how someone wouldn't want to eat all of the delicious dishes on the table in front of you. Mommy took the lead, suggesting a couple things that Cove might like to try, and soon enough, he had a small pile of food on his plate. At first, Cove poked at the food. Clearly, he was apprehensive to eat anything, to eat something new, but he took a few exploratory bites. Right? It's good, huh? Isn't it? You don't have to keep asking. He still speared more meat with his fork and ate it, chewing thoughtfully. It's not bad. <laughs> Go Mommy grinned at his words, satisfied even though it wasn't exactly glo glowing com commendation. Lizzie wasn't as mollified. Hmm, you're so weird. Don't be mean to your friend. We're not friends. Oh. Oh. <laughs> mommy floundered in the face of Ko's blunt honesty. It seemed strange your mommy was taken aback by the news. When had they gotten along? And you didn't consider yourselves to be friends with him either. You had gotten used to seeing him around a lot over the summer, but the two of you hadn't struck anything that could count as friendship. Your mommy looked at your mom and only got a shrug. No. Elizabeth, don't call someone weird. There's no such thing as weird. As a weird person and a non-weird person, there's just different perspectives. It's not nice to say to someone, anyone, but Pam... Mom tri Mommy tried to whisper exclusively to Mom. Her attempt to make it audible over the sounds of clinking silverware meant you caught the quiet words anyway. They're not friends. He said so. As parents, we can only try, and sometimes we fail. Not all kids will be thick as thieves. Now less talking and more eating, kids. You need to clean up and start winding down for bed soon. But White Mom still scares me. Why? What did Pam do to you? <laughs> Pam do to you, man. Uh. Wait, why does white mom scare you? Don't ignore me. She looks like a demon. Oh, her design. I mean, I guess. Everyone has their own opinions. Anyway. But mom, said Lizzie. No buts. We talked about this. Your bedtime will be moved back in a few years. But now you don't get to stay up late. Lizzie sulked, muttering under her breath about how it wasn't right. <laughs> two, you groaned about it as well. It seemed way too early to go to sleep. Isn't that great? The sooner you sleep, the sooner our brand new day will be here. I think that's pretty exciting. You aren't sure you agreed. The rest of the summer passed by unevently. Cove was silent for most of it, even when your mom was attempted to include him in conversation. All too soon, the table was cleared, the games in the living room were put away, and you were all steered to your bedrooms. Mom finished the <gasps> oh, <hold up. sighs> Mom finished tucking you in and kissed your brow just as mommy poked your head her head in the room. All ready for lights off, you two? You were lying uncomfortably in your bed, the blanket hiked up under your armpits. You could kick it off later if it got too hot. Mom had set up the sleeping bag on the floor for Cove, just beside your bed. He had already wiggled inside. Mmm, we are. Good night. Perfect, I'll go say good night to Lizzie then. Mom t tweaked your nose, chuckled when you scoffed in annoyance, and left. Mommy took her place, sitting on the edge of your bed. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams, sweetie. She pressed a soft kiss on your forehead. You giggled as strands of her hair fell forward and tickled you. Mommy smiled down affectionately at you, then moved her head attention to Cove, who watched from his spot on the floor. Do you need anything before falling asleep, honey? What does your dad do? Um, sometimes... Sometimes he picks me up and lifts me really high and he shakes his hands like he's gonna let go. But he get catches me again, 
<laughs> he keeps doing that until sometimes he does drop me on my bed, or other times he lowers me down and we pretend like I'm crashing. Kofi became, had become pretty excited when talking about the nightly ritual he and his dad shared. He seemed to realize how animated he was and bashfully quieted it. But I don't want to do that here. Aww. Uh, how fun! Though, I think you're right, and it might not be a good idea to do that tonight. The sleeping bag might not be a soft enough landing. If there's anything else, you can always ask me or Jamie's other mom. But I'm the nicer one. Just don't tell her that. She laughed good-naturedly and stood up. Take care. Sleep well, Cove. Night. Leaning against the door, door jam, she rested a hand on the light switch and looked to you. Good night. Sleep tight. And don't let the bag bugs bite. With a last smile, Mommy turned off the lights and stepped out, closing the bedroom door behind her. You listened to her footsteps fade as she walked down the hallway. <sighs> you closed your eyes and snuggled in, prepared to drift off. You stared when Cove sighed deeply. You started when Cove sighed deeply. You turned your head to look in his direction. In the dark, you could only see a faint outline of a lump under the covers. Cove? Where's my oh here it is. This is a nine. Could you be quieter please? I don't know. I can't sleep. Why not? He shifted, or at least he thought he did. You couldn't see anything since your eyes were still adjusted to the dark. But you heard his sleeping bag rustle. I wanna be in my bed. Oh, Ko sat up. His eyes had gotten used to the little light level, so you could see him better. He got out of the sleeping bag, wobbled toward your side table, and pulled open the top drawer. What is it? I'm getting my glasses. You sat up too, watching as he reached inside. He paused for a second, then pulled his hand out. Instead of his glasses, though, he was holding a book. Ugh. Cove turned it around in his hands, trying to figure out the proper orientation for it. You knew even without reading the title which one it was. That was one your moms would read to you. It was special. I thought you were looking for your glasses. I was. Then I felt this. It looks cool. The compliment he afforded your special book had you grinning, your confusion forgotten. It is really cool. Oh? Oh yeah? What's it about? It's a story about a squire who wants to become a knight, and there's magic. Does it have mermaids? No, but... Um... I love the main character, because the squire is really brave and funny. But they're stuck working for this knight who's rude to them. Nobody believes they can be a knight, but that doesn't stop the squire. So they go on an adventure and show the king they're worthy. Usually, Cove sported a disinterested expression on his face, or a sad one. You could probably count the number of times you've seen him smile on one hand. Right now, though, he looked excited as he flipped the book over and focused at the backside to try learning more. You're reminded of the hours you spent hearing the tales, no matter how many times you read it, or had it read to you. You're still entertained by the story and pictures inside. You glance out the window. The moon was high in the sky. It was definitely a time where you were supposed to be asleep. You couldn't keep staying up. Fuck! <laughs> we're sure when it had hit you, but sometime between Co spotting your book and you explaining your contents, your eyelids began drooping. As enthralled as you were by the book, you didn't want to stay up. Cove only glanced over when you laid back down, resting your cheek on your pillow. I'm gonna go to bed. Well, is it okay? Oh, Koba? Is it okay if I read your book? From your relaxed position, you narrowed your eyes to him thoughtfully. <sighs> I rolled a two. You have to put it back. Ko frowned, disappointed, but he did as you were instructed. He went back to the side table and placed it inside. You watched as he reluctantly climbed to a sleeping bag, leaving it unzipped. It was the middle of the night, but it was summer, summer and still hot. You snuggled closer to your pillow, your eyes slipping mercifully closed. 
Good night. Silence descended upon you like a blanket, and soon you were fast asleep. When your eyes opened again, your bedroom was pitch black and silent. Your head was smushed in your pillow, your pajamas were sticking to you, and your mouth was dry. Slowly, you raised yourself onto your elbows. You yawned, the back of your throat swinging as you did so. You rolled onto your side to sit up in bed, planning on getting water from the kitchen when you saw a dark shape towering over you. You froze, then you remembered you weren't alone in your room tonight. Cove? That you? Yeah. yeah. Having just awakened at an unknown time of night, you felt a little creeped out. You got up and turned on the lamp on your side table, feeling a little better when the faint light illuminated your bedroom. Cove blinked at you, looking exhausted. He was in his normal clothes again, with shoes and everything. His pajama pants were left on the floor, abandoned. His sleeping bag was in a similar state. What is it? I can't sleep. I keep waking up. Did you have a bad dream? He shook his head from side to side. No, just can't sleep. It's weird here. He frowned. He helped your mom to redecorate it only a few months back. I like my room. It's weird to me. I want to sleep in my bed. I'm gonna go. What? That shook, that shook off the last of your doziness. He was going to walk outside back to his own house this time of night, all by himself. He noted your shocked expression and looked at you with resolve. My dad will let me in. I've gone outside late before, and I have to go. Da -da, na -na, na -na, na -na. I should tell my moms. No, I don't want you to. I'll just leave. My dad can call them in the morning. He knew that you could just let him go, but something inside you was saying that that wouldn't be the right thing to do. It's too late for you to go outside on your own. It'd be bad. Cove grumbled quietly, though stayed put. Okay, you can tell them. I'll wait. Good. When you crept into the room, Mom was still up reading in bed, while Mommy had already fallen asleep. When Mom woke up, woke Mommy up, they were both surprised to hear that Cove wanted to leave, and the two of them followed you back to your room to see him. Sweetie. Cove, are you alright, sweetie? Is there anything we can do to help? Mommy sounded tired after having just woken up, but she smiled at Cove kindly. Cove shook his head firmly, not meeting anyone's eyes as he did so. I just want to go home. Hmm. We're sorry you don't feel comfortable staying. How about you come downstairs with us and we'll call your dad to get you? Cove headed past your mom's and out the room. Mom turned to you before leaving. Alright, off to sleep, kiddo. We'll make sure Cove is taken care of. Good night again. Good night, Jamie. You listened to the sounds of their footsteps on the stairs as you huddled back down in bed, pulling your blanket up around your shoulders. It didn't bother you that Cove had left. At least now you didn't have to worry if he would snore and keep you awake at night. Eventually, your eyes started getting heavy, and with a loud yawn, you finally got comfortable in your bed and drifted off to sleep. The next morning, you were woken up by the sound of Mom's voice and a soft shake on your shoulder. Jamie? Wake up! It's time to get up and at him! The sun was peeking through your curtains, and you rubbed at your eyes as they adjusted to the new light. Mom sat down on the bed next to you, and you blinked at her for a moment, confused. You blinked at her a moment, confused, until you caught the empty sleeping bag on the ground and remembered what had happened during the night. Mr. Holden came over to pick up Cope and take him home. You should have seen his hair when he turned up half asleep. It was even messier than Mommy's in the morning. She giggled at that thought, and you could tell she was trying to make you feel better about the whole situation. So you smiled back at her. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know when Cove wasn't feeling good, Jamie. That was a nice thing to do. He nodded in agreement, and Mom went to say that maybe once Cove started to feel more comfortable, that he could try to sleep over again sometime. He shrugged the idea off, not particularly caring if that happened anytime soon or not. You could have told your parents they what they shouldn't have tried to. You could have told your parents they shouldn't have tried to do this in the first place. Of course, it wouldn't end well. Next time you saw Cove and Mr. Holden, they both apologized for Cove having left so suddenly. You assured them that it was okay. In the end, the two of you and your parents were eventually able to move past the ill-fated sleepover. But it all had been a learning experience, according to the adults. You gotta accept that. There were definitely things he learned from it. <laughs> These events are all very unfortunate. They're only unfortunate because I'm not friends with Cove. That's what how we rolled it. If we were friends, they would end up a little bit better. 
Not the sleepover one, because I know the sleepover one, he still goes back. Because he's just not comfortable sleeping at your house. <sighs> okay. It's gonna be five more events. Let's see which one we got. We got nine again. Oh, wait. Nine. Number nine, we're gonna do Runaway. Are you excited? Oh, whoa, okay. <laughs> Run away. After a couple of hours at the playground by yourself, and I got him firmly into the afternoon. You were on the swing set and with your feet buried in the sand when you spotted Lizzie in the distance. She was rushing over like something was on her tail, chasing her. You knew she would be coming, but she was she that excited to get to the park? Instead of nabbing the signal besides the earth, Lizzie stopped in front of you. She bent over, balanced her hands on her knees, and panted. Did you hear? Hear what? Lizzie bounced back up, her eyes blown wide. You only saw her this worked up when you found the new hiding place of Mom's sugar stash. It's about Cove. Okay, so this is very different. Because uh, I, in my original playthrough, which is the only playthrough I played this memory, um, I was already friends with Cove. And in that one, you're able to run away with Cove. <coughs> Like, it starts off with you seeing Cove walking down the street, and then you follow him. But in this one, it, sound, it looks like that since you aren't friends with Cove, he just ran off by himself. It's about Cove. Cove. Lizzie rarely brought him up herself, and never with this much urgency. What was this about? You listen, confused, as Lizzie explained. I just came out when I saw lots of people gathered around in the middle of the street. They were talking kind of quietly, so I don't think I was supposed to hear. But that just means it was important. <gasps> so I snuck up, and I heard everything. She paused dramatically. Clearly, she wanted you to say something. <laughs> Afro Circus, Afro Circus. So? Seeing that she had your attention, Lizzie continued. Cove is missing. He left a piece of paper for Mr. Holden to tell him he was going away, and we'd be gone for a long time, and no one's seen him since. Now they're searching the whole neighborhood. The grown-ups were even saying that they couldn't find Cove soon. They'll call the police. The police? You had seen police officers around town now and then, but you had never talked to one before. Much as dealt with them. It was an intimidating thought. Was Cove going to be arrested for running away? You watched as your sister began to pace in front of you. I know Mom said Cove was sad about moving here, but running away from home is crazy. Jeez! What el where else is he gonna go anyway? Um, there's six choices. Six. You didn't answer her. Lizzie scrunched her face up, thinking deeply for a moment. Then she nodded and planted her hands on her hips, determined. I'm gonna look too. You are? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We can play at the park any day. And the more people there are looking, the quicker someone will find them. Maybe I'll be the one who does. I'm the best at hide and seek after all. It seemed like Lizzie wanted to look not only because she was concerned about Cove, but also because it was the most interesting thing to happen this week. Wish me luck! Before you could say anything, she ran off in the opposite direction from where she came. You were left in the dust in a matter of moments. That was your sister for you. But Lizzie's appearance in, the, in this crisis faded to the back of your mind just as quickly. Cove. He told us that he was leaving to go somewhere by himself. It was surprising news at first, but that sounded like something he'd do when you considered it again. Unfortunately, you had no idea where he could have gone. You thought hard. There were the hills behind your house. He had gone there the first time you met. But, something, but someone would have checked there already. You wouldn't need the police for that. Cove must be far away, or hiding somewhere, if the whole neighborhood was looking for him. He swung back and forth, your lips pursed in contemplation. If I were Cove, where would I go? Lizzie had said Cove was crazy for a run away from home, but he never considered Sunset Bird his home, did he? His real home was somewhere else. There was only one place that came to mind that might be important enough for Cove to go off like this. It was a good idea, except how was he gonna get there? Could he take a bus? Was he gonna walk the whole way? He didn't know what direction he needed to take. But wait, there was only one way he could go. Going down the street just led to the beach, so that couldn't be right. Going to either side would mean he gets stuck by buildings and fences and big slopes like the one behind your house. That left going up the street. You knew that road. It led into the main part of town and kept going all the way to the city limits. 
Cove didn't know the area well. You didn't think he'd want to go off that road and onto some random other street. Which meant, if someone followed the path, they might find him somewhere along it. The grown-ups seemed to be all looking in the neighborhood, so... Da 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 You had to tell them where to search. You rushed on to where you abandoned your flip-flops and slipped them on. They were slapped against the sand as you left the playground. On your way home, you spot her mom almost instantly. She must know about Coven was looking too, because she was wearing a worried frown. Her expression cleared up when she saw you walking towards her. Jamie, I'm glad you're here. Cove is- She cut herself off, sighing deeply. Why don't you head inside? I need to stay out a little bit longer. Something's going on around here. Going on right now, but we'll take care of it. She tried to usher you in the house, but you wouldn't budge from where you stood. I know where Cove went! What? what? That- That should find you out he's missing already. <laughs> she shook her head before you could answer. You know what? That's not important right now. Where is it, Jamie? You told her your hunch. She listened intently. Hmm. The main street. That's not good. I'll drive down there and make sure he doesn't get far. She, she, Mom muttered that more to herself than you, but you heard her all the same. Uh, Cove. Is Cove gonna be okay? Mom turned back to you, her features softening. She leaned down and hugged you briefly. Yes. Don't worry, Jamie. He will be. You helped make sure of that. She sounded more confident than you felt. Just like that, some of your worry faded away. Maya guided you to the house with a hand on your shoulder. You both went in. Mommy appeared quickly. She must be waiting nearby. There was a phone in her hand. It worried you, thinking about who she might have been talking to. Mom briefly explained what happened before she grabbed the car keys. Mommy saw her out. Soon after, you were herded into the kitchen. You sat at the table where while Mommy microwave leftovers, which you gobbled at. You hadn't even realized how hungry you were. The two of you settled into the living room after that. Mommy put a cartoon on the TV for you to watch while you waited. You snuggled up against her side as you watched the show, warm and safe. Your mind was still on Cove. Would mom find him out there in town, or was he actually somewhere else? You didn't have to wait long to find out. Halfway through the episode, you heard the front door unlock, then it swung open with a shout. We're here! I got him, Lonnie! Come on in, Cove. He didn't stir from the couch at first, not sure what to do, but mommy got up, so you followed her. Mom was putting the car keys away. Cove stood nearby with his head bowed. He squinted to get a better look at him. Cove looked exhausted. His eyes were rimmed red, nearly matching his glasses, and there were dry tear tracks stuck to his cheeks. And a backpack was slung over one of his shoulders. He really had planned on running away. <sighs> oh, thank goodness, you found him. Yes, he was way down Main Street, just like Jamie said. Cove shuffled his feet at that, but he remained silent. You can tell that he felt out of place. You weren't the only one who noticed his discomfort. Okay. You must be tired, Cove. You can sit down wherever you like. Mommy smiled warmly and motioned him to the living room. Cove looked up at her, then lowered her over. You walked close behind him, frowning. Cove was always pretty quiet, but this was a different kind of quiet. The living room wasn't far, or separated by a wall, so you heard your mom talking softly. He wanted to go see his mother. Poor thing. Well, that explains it, at least. Still, I'm not sure it excuses it. It was so, so dangerous to go off into town like that. He's having a hard time right now. You can't expect the child to handle it maturely. True, it can't be helped. That's enough of that. We should tell Cliff and the other that he's here before the panic gets out of hand. There could be riots. Is that alright? I'll call, then go to the front and tell everyone's still out there. You keep an eye on the kids. Make sure you don't have any more trips today. Got it, hun. Cove just sat there on the couch, setting his backpack down beside him. He stared at his hands. This is so weird. What is? Everyone was looking for me. They all know I tried to leave. I wanted to run away and not come back this time, so I don't have to see them again. Mm. Three. They'll forgive you. Maybe. You had more to say to Cove and to ask him, but before you could, the front door opened. Your mom was back, with Mr. Holden close behind her. He made a beeline for the couch, his gaze trained on his son. Cove? God, are you alright? Strands of his hair had fallen out of his ponytail. His eyes were darkened, like he'd been crying too. Cove stared up at his dad, his own eyes wide behind the frames of his glasses. 
He really hadn't expected it to be such a big deal. I'm okay. Good. That's good. I'm so glad to hear that. He clasped a hand on his son's shoulder, attempting a smile, but the corner of his lips twitched in spasm, as if they wanted to wilt into a frown instead. Cove seemed to have ha <laughs> seemed to have that effect on him. Mr. Holden turned to you, still grinning weakly, weakly, then looked at your mom's. Thanks for your help, as always. He laughed pitifully. I'm sorry. And I'm very sorry for ruining your afternoon with this. I can't apologize enough. It's okay. It's no trouble, Cliff. Really. It couldn't be helped in a way. Something was bound to happen sometime. We're just happy we could help, and that goes safe and sound. Not for the first time that day, he recalled your original meeting with Cove. He had run away then, too, only not as far as he had today. Cove must have had a similar thought, because he mumbled an apology. Sorry, Dad. I... I won't leave anymore. Promise. <laughs> Some life seemed to return to Mr. Holden thanks to his promise. This time around, his smile was more genuine. I'm so glad. That's a relief to hear. Next time you feel like running off, come to me first, okay? We can talk about it. I'm here for you. Cove nodded. His dad reached out and must his, must his hair playfully. Although he made a face, Cove didn't try to dodge the hand as he usually did. Let's go home, bud. I bet you're as tired as I am. Mr. Holden took over carrying Cove backpack, still clasping a free hand on his son's shoulder when he stood up from the couch. The five of you walked over to the front door so you could see him off. Mr. Holden thanked your mom profusely at least three more times before he walked out the door. Cove was made to follow. <gasps> but he stopped and turned to you before stepping through the threshold. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie. Huh? What for? Your mom said you were the one who told her where to get me. It was good that I went back. A tiny smile flitted across his lips, there and then gone. And with that, Cove left. Mommy closed the door behind them. You were left feeling overwhelmed. Your fatigue must have been obvious because your parents sent you off for a nap with no more discussion on what happened that day. Once your head hit the pillow, your eyes slipped closed on their own. After the nap, everything else was a blur. You were settled into bed for real later that night and what felt like just a couple moments. You woke up much more at ease than you had felt when you were last conscious. It was almost like it was a dream, but it definitely wasn't. Your mom's face when you saw them assured that. After breakfast, you were sat down, and your family went over yesterday events in full. They were pleased that you came to them the moment you had an idea where Cope disappeared off to. As a reward, your mom's promised to take you and Lizzie out for a treat later. It was more than welcome change from the worry you've been dealing with. Mr. Holden talked to Cove about what happened too. He didn't know what he said exactly, but Mr. Holden forgave Cove immediately. He didn't do anything to punish Cove for running away. He blamed no one but himself for Cove's desire to leave home. He caught your mom discussing it once in hushed tones, frowning at each other. It was pretty serious. There was a word used you hadn't heard before. Self-flagellation? But there wasn't anything they could do to change Mr. Holden's mind. Your neighbors stopped you and your and Cove, often for the next week or so, to express their concerns and disapproval for the event. Still, as they always did, days continued past, and so did talk about Cove running away. Eventually, things eventually returned to normal, as they had to. Summer kept going, and you kept having experiences you shared with Cove. Alright, I need to do four more, however, I'm very tired. I think I shall end it here today. <laughs> My throat hurts. I need to drink water. Yeah. So, um, I guess that's the end of my stream. Thank you for coming. Um, I assume it was only John that came. If there's other people here, they have not talked, so I did not know. Um, thank you for coming again. Um, it's really fun for me to just read, I guess. Hello. Hello, John. I guess it's really fun for me to just read stuff out loud, so I'm glad came and this is the closest thing we got to doing the random thing because i was supposed to go over to john house to do this just privately but uh, this is fine <laughs> so uh thank you okay goodbye goodbye bye bye